Let me actually show you guys my first internal reaction when I saw this card. Yes! Finally! So you might guess that I actually like this card. That doesn't mean that this card is actually good. This is just a typical card that I personally like. So I might be a little bit biased towards Golos Tireless Pilgrim. You see, for a long time I have been waiting for a commander that can tutor for land cards and preferably has a lot of color identities and a good decent playable ability. This new legendary artifact commander Golos is fulfilling a lot of my favorite criteria. He is a commander on five color identities. I love playing all co five colors. He can tutor for lands. That is something I've been waiting for a lot. A commander that can find a specific land, whatever land I want from my deck. He has a somewhat good card drawing ability. Let's begin with talking about Golos secondary ability, the activated ability. So this is the ability that gives Golos a five color identity. Verberg, five mana, then two extra generic, a total of seven mana. That is actually a lot of mana, but it's a really huge ability. Exile the top three cards of your library. This turn you may play those cards without paying mana cost for them. I would like to mention that play and cost are not the same thing. Play is a combination of both putting lands into play and casting spells, while if, there, if it would read cast those spells this turn without paying mana cost for them, that means that you wouldn't be allowed to put lands into play. However, you can't put more lands into play than you have land drops for this turn. That means that if you activate Golos ability during instant speed in an opponent's end step, then you can't actually cast anything that requires you to cast them in sorcery speed. Let's begin with comparing Golos with Frasius, currently the best Paradox Engine boss that we have. Let's say we have these three permanents in play. That is too few for Frasius to win with Paradox Engine. Frasius' ability costs 4 mana, but then you want to have more mana available from non-land sources of permanents to be able to cast whatever Frasius draws. For example, if the card that you draw into with Frasius cost more than the mana you have in your mana pool, then you can't actually proceed and the, sp the combo fizzles. For example, if you have, so you want to have something like 5 mana or more and a really low seems to cost overall inside your deck, so that with every card that you draw into with Frasis, you're able to cast it and get a secondary paradox engine trigger to repeat. Now this is where Golos will excel a little bit above Frasius. Hold on now. Golos ability costs 7 mana, just a lot more than Frasius 4 mana. But remember that you are exiling 3 cards with Golos. And let's say that we activate these 3 permanents and tap some lands and activate Golos ability. Now you, let's say that you're also a bit lucky and that you exile 3 non-land cards with Golos. You cast them one by one without paying mana for them. Each time you cast one of those three cards, you get a Paradox Engine trigger. That means that you one, two, three times. Three versus three becomes nine. With three permanents and three Paradox Engine triggers, you get nine mana. That's netting two ma more mana compared to what Golos activated ability costs. Also, do remember that Golos will cast the cards without paying mana for them. Now, Frasius PST Paradox Engine deck has a deck construction demand that you play a lot of cards on a really low CMC cost so that whatever card that you draw into with Frasius, you're able to cast it with the remaining mana so you're able to go through your deck. This does not apply to Golos. You can have some really expensive spells and you will still get the Paradox Engine trigger. But we're not quite done yet. I have more things to mention about Paradox Engine Frasius and Golos. So, when Golos Tyler's Pilgrim enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card and put that card onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Here is a decent land card, Inventor's Fair. If you control three or more artifacts that's easily achieved, you can pay four mana and sacrifice the land, search your deck for an artifact. 
like Paradox Engine. So Golos is a commander that can win with a one card combo Paradox Engine, but also tutor for it. But also, if the machine would end up in a graveyard, we could also tutor for Buried Ruin and regain the machine from the graveyard back to our hand. Now, of course, there is a small advantage to actually draw cards compared to instantly casting them. For example, if you go to an opponent's end step and you have a bunch of untapped mana, you can activate Frasi's ability and draw into more counter spells like these things. But also, if an opponent is doing something, you can respond instead and make sure that you don't lose the game. We can't actually do that with Golos, because if we go to an opponent's end step and activate the Golos and we find, let's say, these two counter spells, they will remain in exile because they don't have a target. So what we're basically doing by activating Golos ability in an opponent's end step, when there's nothing on the stack, we don't gain any value. We're just exiling cards on top of our library. So instead, what you should do is always aim at activating Golos ability during your main phase, during the time where you can cast things in sorcery speed. And instead look for cards with interaction like stacks interaction like stranglehold or cards that have some just responsive always probably have a target for example natural state i'm sure that you're gonna have one opponent or more that have something that you could blow up with this spell but there are more strategies that this commander could actually try and go for turns whenever a commander has the ability to draw a high amount of cards the more the better that commander could go for the turns game plan. When you activate Golos ability, you will draw three cards. Or you're not going to draw three cards, but you're going to be producing three card drop production. So you draw one card per turn, then you activate Golos. So you're, now you're digging through four cards on top of your library pretty much every turn. And if you have enough extra turn spells inside your deck, your high rate, your high chance of always nailing one extra turn spell among the four is gonna be pretty high. And then when the only two cards remaining in your deck is Beacon of Tomorrow and Nexus of Fate, you pretty much win the game. Now the turns game plan and the Paradox Engine game plan will probably synergize quite well inside this Golem deck. So the deck that I'm trying to visionize and show you here is something that would look like this, a really low land count to make sure that you don't hit lands or like maximum of one land each time you activate your commander's ability. Then a high amount of mana rocks and dorks to ramp out your commander ASAP and activate your commander ASAP. Then there's that paradox engine, then there's a bunch of extra turn spells, and then there's a high amount of stacks cards. So you're always trying to activate this commander's ability in your main phase to either gain an extra turn, win the game instantly with Paradox Engine, or fill your board state with more stacks pieces. And my final verdict for this commander is really simple, that I actually think that that deck that I envisionized would be pretty okay. Quite a good, decent deck. A big negative to it, however, is that you can't play that many uh, counter spells because you want to activate your commander in sorcery speed to find either extra turns, paradox engine, more rocks, more dorks, or stacks cards. You want to interact with your opponents with stacks cards in this deck. But this is the first commander that can actually tutor for lands, and I actually think that's huge. I had a deck once that was focused around Valakut, and that deck back in the days played Shida Falara as the commander. This was, however, pretty much just color identity, and when they printed uh, partner commanders, I immediately switched out and replaced Shida Falara with the Timur couple. Frasius and Chrom. Chrom was pretty much just color identity and a Kadra commander. It was a decent good commander in general. But Frasius was a great commander, a huge upgrade. His ability to flip the top card of your library, and if that is a land, smash that land into play. I could put mountains into play at instant speed, and I could interact with my opponent's creatures and planeswalkers in instant speed because Valakut. And that turned out to be a really okay-ish deck. It still didn't go beyond casual and today 
that Tiamer uh, Frasius Chrome deck is currently just a casual deck. But then I figured out another upgrade for it. I replaced Chrome with Vile Smasher. And I only did that because I wanted to get access to black. Because what I wanted was Odd Nauseum. Because I played so many land cards in that deck, I could easily make sure that the converted mana cost ratio of the entire deck went so low that if I resolved this, I would pretty much draw my entire deck. And from that, I would win the game. I made a really cool deck tech video about that. And this is currently the best Valakut deck I currently have. But that deck still had a problem that I had to use tutors to find Valakut. And I wanted to have a better way of finding Valakut. And I still wanted to have a commander with an ability like this one. And this Golem, this Golus, is that thing that I've been waiting for. And that's pretty much why I shouted out, yes, finally, in the beginning of this video. Because when I resolve and cast Golus, I will tutor and find Valakut. And when I have enough mana, which I could easily get in a land-focused ramp deck that want to achieve this condition, then I can activate Golus and flip some more cards and smash more mountains into play. The big nerf, however, the big weakness to Golus compared to Frasius is that Frasius puts lands into play at instant speed in an opponent's turn in response to something, while Golus will only put lands into play at sorcery speed. If I activate Golus ability during opponent's turn, I can't play lands, I don't have additional land drops during my opponent's turn. So in the end, we will have to see. I don't actually know. Making Valakut playable and valid in CDH has been a quest for me for quite some time. And I've been waiting for something that is gonna make it valid or possible. So when I told you in the beginning of this video that I might be biased towards this commander, I wasn't lying. But I'm gonna be honest, I don't actually know if this is what a Valakut needs to be playable in CDH. My research and playtesting will prove if it works or not. Currently, I still sit in my opinion that Thrasis and Vile Smasher of Nauseum Valakut deck is the best Valakut deck that I currently have. Um, from playtesting and playing it, uh, that deck actually functions pretty well. I don't know if Golus is gonna be replacing Thrasis and Vile Smasher, or it's better if Golus just does something of its own. We will have to see how it goes. But let's look at something a little bit more common compared to my fringe IDs. Let's say that you have a deck that could win the game if you resolve an Odd Nauseum or a Flash Hulk, that is. So with Golos, if the game goes a little bit longer and you're starting to predict that your opponent has a bunch of counter spells in your hand, and if you're gonna cast that Odd Nauseum, then you're just gonna counter spell it. So then you cast the Golos and tutor for Bosei who shelters all. And then on your next turn, you cast Ad Nauseum with Bosei protection. Now they can't stop it. Currently, Wizard of the Coast is on something you could call a printing havoc, giving us a lot more new cards to play with. And I really think that's great. That's gonna be a lot of fun. More cards for the format? That's good. But I'm also trying to kind of catch up because I want to give you card reviews and I want to give you deck tech videos and I want to do gameplay videos of new legendary uh, commanders that are CDH viable. And I guess this is a good opportunity to talk about my uh, current projects. I'm currently digging my claws into Cissé, Weatherlight Captain, the new five colored Cissé, just to get an angle on her test her, see if she's good, and we actually made a gameplay with her, so I guess that uh, first video is going to be coming up in two days or so, depending on how fast I finished editing on it. But I also want to do a Cissé Primer, because I did a, a Primer about another five color commander back in the days, Nigella, the Blade Blossom, and I really liked how that Primer came out, it was a big a video 50 minutes about how to build Nigella and things to think about when you're building Nigella. And I'm starting to get, get a lot of things that I want to mention about Cissé in order and how you build her and what you need to think about. And I have a feeling I'm, I'm gonna be doing one on Golos as well because I, I do think that Golos will be a good commander and I think there's a lot of things that you need to think about when you're building Golos.
But another thing that I've also made is a Discord channel. In the description below of this video, you will find a link to that Discord channel and you're all welcome. I hope to see you there. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below and I will try and answer that question always. But if you also want to reach me on my Discord channel, you can do that as well. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. I would like to give a special thanks to the people that support me by either sharing my videos to others or supports me on Patreon. Take care guys, bye!